Hey YouTube, it's Marquita, and today I am 33 weeks and 3 days pregnant. And we are getting into like seriously, I know I have said it like the past two videos that we're in the home stretch, but really we are. Um, I'll go into symptoms and then I'll say like why we really are in the home stretch. So, symptoms for this past week, uh, my morning sickness is back and it's awful. <laughs> Um, the past couple of days, I've just felt like crap. This is honestly the only thing that helps settle my stomach. It's a San Pellegrino Lemonada, and it's probably because it has like 18% lemon juice in it. And so, um, I don't know if I ever talked about it in my videos or not, but I mix together like, um, I think it's like a tablespoon of lemon juice, uh, fresh lemon juice, or it can be the concentrate kind as well. And then a tablespoon of honey and I mix them together and then I just take a little bit on the spoon and put it in my mouth and that really helps settle my stomach. I don't know why that works, but it works. So probably the fact that this is like made from actual lemon juice is probably the only reason why it helps. Because um, I'm not feeling good today. So I'm feeling like crap the past couple days, but today I feel a little bit better. So I said, let me go ahead and make a video. <laughs> um... So, nausea, um, luckily no vom, oh wait, I take that back, I did have vomiting. Um, heartburn, I forgot to mention that in my video last week, and I didn't feel like going back in and trying to edit it in, but oh my gosh, it's like there's like a dragon that lives right here, and it like is constantly spitting fire, like it's bad. Um, my Tums are almost gone. They're the calcium ones, so I don't feel really bad about taking them. And you guys know that I don't really like, um, or maybe you don't know, those of you who know me know that I do not like taking medication. Um, so the fact that there's calcium in those tums is the only reason why I'm taking them. Um, what other symptoms? Been having a lot of Brax Braxton Hicks contractions lately. None that have really kind of like stopped me in my tracks like the ones before, um, but I do feel them quite frequently. Um, excuse me, still very thirsty. Uh, we had to have water delivered early this week as I predicted that we would have to. And we got water delivered on Tuesday and I have killed one five gallon <laughs> jug it's already gone today so um luckily I upped our shipment to four jugs every two weeks so now we have three to make us until um, not next Friday but the Friday after next <laughs> um, what else let's see heartburn nausea um, constipation is back sorry if that's TMI I don't even know why I apologize for TMI things anymore because if you're watching this then you should probably be TTC or pregnant so constipation is back it's not fun um, I was really excited when I didn't have to worry about going I still go regularly it's just not as, it's not easy to go so we'll leave it at that um, what else? Still really tired. Um, Krista's been making me get in the bed at between 8 and 9 o'clock, and I have been sleeping until about 8 or 9 o'clock the next morning. So, um, really tired. Really just kind of like, ugh, feeling really blah. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much it for symptoms, and I'm sure that I'll remember a symptom as soon as I go to post this video. I'll be like, damn it, I didn't include that. But <laughs> um, those are all really the symptoms for this week. Um, I think they said the baby weighs. It's I'm starting to get to the point in my pregnancy where each app tells me something different as far as weight. One app said four pounds, four plus pounds. One app said five pounds. Um, I don't know because we haven't had a scan recently and I actually don't know when our next scan is going to be. I feel like it might be, um, it's not at 34 weeks because I'll be 34 weeks next week. 
Um, so maybe at 36, or maybe I'm not going to have one at all because I'm now with my midwife. But um, I don't know how much she weighs. Krista says that I definitely feel bigger. Um, my stomach doesn't look bigger to me, but it's heavier, that's for sure. And I can, like, it feels like the baby is filling up the majority of my stomach. So I know that she's getting bigger. I just don't know how big. And a lot of people are like making bets on how big they think the baby will be. And I'm, I should probably set up one of those expect net guess things and maybe do a giveaway. That will be fun for you guys to guess when the baby's going to come and how much she's going to weigh. You guys get a given because you know that she's a girl. So I think I'll do that. I'll do that between now, this week, and next week. I'll get that set up. Um, What else? Her movements, <laughs> I can just pretty much guess that from here on out. They're going to hurt. Um, she sticks her fists or elbow in my belly button still. And that is not a pleasant feeling. Oh, I keep forgetting to say, because when we had, and I have to say it now, it's completely out of sequence, but I keep forgetting every week. So when we had our ultrasound at 30, 30, what was that, like 32? Now I'm 33. So at 30 weeks, I don't know. Whenever we had our last scan, <laughs> They notice that she has hair. Yay! No bald babies. <laughs> I don't know how much hair she has. Um, you could see it like kind of like wafting in the in the fluid, and that was really cool. Because um, my daughter had lots of hair, but I never had anyone point out that she had hair on an ultrasound. I just knew that I had really bad heartburn, and I know that heartburn doesn't always correlate to hair growth, but we could actually see her hair. So she's like not completely bald. Yay. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay. So, um, but she's rolling around, moving around. Her movements have definitely decreased, um, but it's because she's bigger, but that has not stopped her from thinking that she is a six ounce, um, fetus and not a four plus pound soon to be born baby. <laughs> um, she's still attempting to roll around, kick, move. So, yeah, and then Krista gets her all riled up. <laughs> um, what else? So, yeah, like I said, um, last week when we had our midwife appointment, or, yeah, last week, she told us the baby can come at any time after 36 weeks, which is, like, freaking me out because that's in two weeks, and I'm not ready to have a baby in two weeks. Um... And then a month from um, Tuesday, so a little less than a month, I'll be full term. And then we plan to start, like, the eviction process um, at 38 weeks uh, for because of my gestational diabetes and because of my anxiety levels. Um, we're going to start trying natural things, but it's not a guarantee that baby's going to come at 38 weeks or 39 weeks or that I won't be overdue. Excuse me. Rude. Um, so, yeah. Um, a little over a month, possibly. And baby could be here. That's kind of crazy to both of us. But we're getting really excited. So, that's awesome. Um, this week, I went to... I had two separate appointments. I started my chiropractic care... And I'm really happy that I did. I have an actual chiropractor appointment today at 3.30. And I'm excited because I need it. When you're pregnant and you have that um, hormone relaxin in your system, you don't hold chiropractic adjustments very long. So um, I'm going back in for another adjustment today. But um, that was great. It was a good thing that I did because they said that my pelvis was, you know, kind of like tilted differently. And my tailbone was actually still like scooted in. So I'm giving you a pelvis, these are your hips, and this would be like your coccyx, which is your tailbone. And so it was like kind of scooted in, and it's not supposed to be in, it's supposed to be out. So it was a really good thing that I'm starting chiropractic care, because that could have been an issue coming time for labor. Um, and they've also been able to really help me with my um, symphysis, symphysis pubis dysfunction, which is... Um, I know that I complained about it earlier in my pregnancy and a couple of people said, oh, it's just sciatica and it's actually not. It's, um, so this is your pelvis again. 
and in the front of your pelvis you have this piece of cartilage that would be like right here in the middle and when you're pregnant it can kind of go up or down and make your pelvis do this and so that pulling motion on that uh, piece of cartilage is what causes that really bad pain that I was telling you guys about flipping over in bed or walking some days I couldn't walk so they've been using a little tool right there on my on my pelvic uh, bone to try to get those joints back to where they need to be so um, that's really exciting to be able to like not be in pain all the time um, I also started my acupuncture appointments to get for cervical ripening so we're not doing the actual cervical ripening but we're getting my body ready for labor right now and then in a couple weeks we will start cervical ripening so um, I'm excited about that I mean I get to go to acupuncture I haven't been in ac haven't been to acupuncture in over eight months so I'm excited to get back and like to go every week yay um, also I almost forgot I did my belly cast this weekend those of you who follow me on Facebook um, know that I did my belly cast this weekend and I'm so sorry because I said that I was going to post pictures as soon as it was done. However, let me just give you guys this warning. If you're going to do a belly cast, these are the things not to do. Don't stand up because you're concerned that you're going to ruin your furniture. <laughs> and make sure you take breaks. And know that there's a chance for you to pass out. When I did my first belly cast when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, I was sitting in a chair at the time. I didn't have new furniture. I didn't really care if it got plaster on it or whatever. My mom did my belly cast for me that time. And I told her that I was like, my mom did both of my arms and my stomach, and I had my hands in it as well. So both hands on my belly, up here to my shoulders, and all the way down. So my mom was finishing it. My mom's a perfectionist. She's an Aries as am I. And so is Krista. So we're all perfectionists. And so on that first belly cast that we did when I was pregnant with my daughter, my previous daughter, um, I told my mom that I was starting to freak out. And my mom's like, you're just being a hypochondriac. Just like, I'm almost done. And I said, no, I really feel like it's hard to breathe. And my mom was like, ugh, you're fine. And the next thing that I remember, I was in the tub and in a cold bath, and I had passed out. Fast forward to 2012, when I'm pregnant with this baby, and Chris is all gung-ho to do a belly cast. And I'm like, my mom gave her the pep talk. She was like, have a couple shots of tequila. We did it on Cinco de Mayo. So she said, have a couple shots of tequila because she's going to make you want to drink. <laughs> so I decided I didn't want to sit on my furniture, even with the drape cloth, because I did not want plaster of Paris on my furniture. And um, we started doing the belly cast, and I had to, and I stood up, and we did it. And I told her so she just needed to kind of work fast. Well, this is after she had had a margarita, because we had our own little fiesta here at the house. So she had had a margarita, and she was like really focusing, and she was going slow. So we get. Um, I decided I didn't want both hands in the belly cast and I didn't want both shoulders. I said one shoulder, you know, breasts and belly. So she got my shoulder done, my breast done, and started working on the stomach. And I said, okay. She said, okay, I think you need to take a break. And I said, okay. So I was walking around, but I realized that I couldn't walk too much because the belly cast had started to lift off of my body because it was drying. So I was like, okay, just get it done because it's lifting. So she starts back going, and I'm like shifting back and forth, and she's like, are you okay? And I said, yes. But honestly, I couldn't breathe. It felt like this elephant was on my chest, and I don't know if it's because it's the plaster. My mom said with the other belly cast, she thinks it's because there was like not enough oxygen flowing. You know, that's your whole upper torso covered in plaster. You can't, your body can't breathe. So, um, but that wasn't the case this time. My whole body wasn't covered, and something should have been able to breathe. But probably with my anxiety, it probably wasn't a good idea for me to do a belly cast. But I couldn't breathe. I was standing up, and Krista was like, okay, go take a break. So the only place that I could go that was rational for me was our um, downstairs half a bathroom. So I go to sit on the toilet, and she's like, do you have to go to the bathroom? And I was like, no. And then I was like, oh. And she's like, are you having a contraction? I was like, no. She was like, are you okay? And I was like, yes. But I wasn't. And I was like, oh, my God, Krista. Like, two seconds later, I said, 
get it off of me. She said, what's the problem? I said, I'm going to pass out. She was like, oh, babe, no, seriously. I was like, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to hit the floor. And when I was getting ready to pass out and hit the floor, she got in the bathroom enough time to, like, rip the belly cast off of me. And I just, like, was on hands and knees. You know, whenever you're about to pass out, you know, that train, that woo, the ringing in your ears, you can't see, you get tunnel vision. I was totally there. She's like, drink water. Um, it was scary. But I realized I had this moment um, where I realized I had a storage unit that actually had all of Imani's bigger stuff in it. Um, my daughter that passed away. It had her belly cast in it. It had her um, blanket from the hospital when she passed away. It had her locks of hair. It had everything except for my photo album. And my storage unit got destroyed. And so I don't have any of those tangible items except for my photo album to hold on to of hers. And I realized that this is going to be the last baby that I'm going to carry in my body and birth. And so I didn't want to not have a belly cast in or have a belly cast that was half finished. So I said, no, we're going to finish this. And Krista was so pissed. She did not want to finish it, but I forced her to. And we finished it and it came out really good. And I'll put in pictures at the end of this video. <laughs> To show you guys with the belly cast, it came out actually really good. Um, it has the one shoulder and it has one hand, this hand, on my belly, and it looks good. So, just know that if you guys are going to do a belly cast, please be safe. Drink a lot of water. Even though I did drink a lot of water, I still almost passed out. If you feel like you're going to pass out, have someone get the belly cast off of you and get on your left side so you can breathe better, get more oxygen to the baby. And, um, yeah, if it's fixable, like... Once we went to go fix it, it was fine because um, I could breathe up here. It had already been taken off, and she just had to finish the bottom of my belly. So, um, yeah, that was my super long story about my belly cast. So, yeah, I think that's it for the week. Um, Got to go and get ready to get dressed for my chiropractor appointment so I can feel better. We're having some sunny days here in Seattle, so we're going to get out and enjoy the sun this weekend. And I hope that everyone else has a wonderful weekend. I want to send lots of baby dust to those of you who are trying. Um, what else? Those of you who are pregnant, um, sending you lots and lots of stick baby stick vibes. Stay baby stay, especially for a family for our home. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Sorry if I got that wrong. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's it. She has an uh, incompetent cervix and is in the hospital. And I think she's 24 weeks, 23 and a half weeks. So I'm really hoping that her baby sticks in there and stays in there and doesn't try to make an early entrance to the world. Um, and yay to everyone else who's having like great pregnancy news congrats to everyone who just got their bfps and hugs to everyone who's having a difficult time um i want to send a special hug out to um jatil and her partner annie i cannot remember their screen name um but they just suffered a miscarriage and they have been going through 10 years of infertility and i know that it's really hard for them right now um also, uh, another one of my followers, GND, just had a chemical pregnancy, and, you know, it's hard. That's hard, and I want to give you guys a big virtual hug. And anyone else who's going through a miscarriage or a hard time with TTC, infertility, all of the other stuff that comes along with this process, just be kind to yourselves and to your partners, and things will get better. So... Anybody else that I missed, sorry, charge it to my head, not my heart, charge it to the pregnancy brain, and um, I will check in with you guys next week for week 34, crazy, so yeah, anyway, okay, we're coming up on a 20 minute vlog, so I'll talk to you guys next week, everybody have a great weekend, many blessings, bye!